Tendai's decided he's going to run from London to Ipswich, which means that Tendai will run from London to Ipswich. Because even though Tendai's been in the UK for nine years and he's very westernised compared with how he was when he first arrived, Tendai's still quite naive in certain situations. Um, and I didn't think that he realised what he was getting himself in for, but thought he'll, he'll, he'll do it anyway. And he'll do it if he raises 40 quid, 50 quid. He'll still do it. Just after he'd been to, to Zambia to see his family again. And um, it, I suppose it just reminded him what it was like over there. You know, because I suppose you become um, used to the, the, the luxury, shall we say, of a country like this. You know, I know we all moan about it, but some, I come from where someone like he does, it's um, everything's a luxury, whether it's, uh, you know, with cars or anything like that. You know what I mean? So he. Um, I think it reminded him of, of uh, the poverty some of those poor kids and families are living in. So he, he said he wants to do something extraordinary. Um, and he mentioned he wants to run from London to Ipswich. Now, he was literally just going to go and do it. Uh, and he wanted to raise £500. And we said, no, you've got to do it properly too. You need to have the proper training. You need to have the proper advice, etc., etc." Um, and lo and behold, um, my initial reaction was, you can't do that. It's impossible. And then, of course, you think about it and think, well, actually, no, it's not. It's a fantastic feat, but... People do do it, you know. I mean, it's not it would be on the realms of impossibility. But yeah, my ministry. Then I said something stupid. I said, oh, "I'll do it with you." <laughs> we were all sitting in this garden, and Tendai said he wanted to do it, and everyone was like, "No, you can't do that, Tendai." And then they got round to thinking about it. Said, "Yeah, maybe you can." And then Simon said, oh, "I'll do it with you." And they're like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> and Tendai said, "No, I want to do it on my own." And they're like, "Thank God." And then about two minutes later, I sort of backtracked a bit. Like, oh, crumbs! <laughs> 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 I can't do that, you know. So, uh, but no, my initial reaction was madness. But then you sort of, as the weeks build up and the build up to it, you start to think, this is uh, this is quite cool and it's quite an amazing thing he's he suggested it, you know. So it's just this, it's classic Tendai, just to come up with an idea like that, classic Tendai, and he just doesn't doesn't do things by halves, and he uh, he did. He just sat in the garden and told us all about it, and we all just went, oh, okay. <laughs> It was quite brilliant, really, because none of us went, oh, no, that's a silly idea, you can't do that, Tendo. We all straight away said, OK, we'll help you do that, too. And it was, you know, just, you know, we got on with it. So for anybody to suddenly just suggest something like that when, you know, we knew what tea and we knew he was sort of going to the gym and things like that. I didn't know he was... I knew he ran occasionally. But, you know, for anybody to just suddenly announce, well, do you know what, I'm going to do three marathons in a day. I think you have to. There's part of you that has to go... Lunatic, lunatic, absolute <laughs> lunatic. I personally wasn't at all surprised. I, I thought he's going to, I mean, we obviously had no idea of what was coming, but when he did announce it, I thought, well, good on him. He, he wants to do something that's not easy. Um, and and what, what other thing could he have done, really? Um, and, and as far as I was concerned, that was all achievable in his eyes, well and mine, I never doubted him, but um, that was quite a, um, a thought on his part, but the object was not to be easy. Wow, it cannot be done really, I didn't know whether it was going to be achievable or not, yeah. um, but at the same time I thought, well, if anyone can do it, then T can, because he's got such a strong mind, you know, and he'll put his all into whatever. That, that was the point of it, wasn't it, that it wasn't going to be easy and it had to be hard for him to do he had to think of something that was hard in order for him to feel that he was doing something for his people if I say to you it was easy that's a lie okay but if I tell you uh, what the reason why I was doing this that's the reason why I keep me going okay and I need to give you an example. Most of people, if you're talking about Africa, they only know in towns. Okay? But I'm talking about Africa, real Africa in rural area. If you go there in rural area, where people they grow up, how they grow up, how they walk, okay, how they take life every day. If you come here, you have another option and, and your brain will be different, okay? Because every time I was doing, I was thinking, okay there's a lot of kids there they they can go home they don't have a food but look at me i have a lot of support with me but these kids they go home they don't have even food to eat they go home they don't have even uh, if they go to school they're sent away there's no books to read 
But if I can just do this only one day, I can buy him one book to read. What a great thing. Yeah, and then we'll spin round. Quite awesome. I love this car, to be honest, you know, like on the plane, you know. I didn't see that. basically was really only one straight line um, because we'd obviously got to keep it um, rel as, as short as possible but then of course the issues of safety came in um, and then we really did get down to the nitty-gritty of, of you know where he would run um, and as it turned out the route that we eventually finished up with was probably as good as you could have done um, with Kate and myself mainly, um, you know, just sort of researching the whole thing. Oh, there you go, there's Tower Bridge, there you go, take that, that Tower Bridge. Oh, look, 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 look. I thought you were about to take that photo again. You can't miss that. Filming? Alright, this stuff. So you caught my burp on tape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where I stood in my garden, right in there, out there, and I was up that wall. This side of the bridge. So you run across. Some, um, Simon gets some really good pictures. Some yeah. background shots with the old uh, girl. Oh, yeah, this is yeah, definitely, mate. Which is quite a cool building. Not the bridge, is it? Right, from now, T. Have you zeroed it there? Yeah. Oh, so, can someone else just take that? Because I'm going to start noting down who's going to do what cycle up. Oh, no, no, just in case he gets lost. Right, this is the part of London. Yeah, now it's zero, zero, now it's yeah. broke. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see how... This is the part of London that's actually quite impressive to each of us. So we are going this way now, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is the way you'll go, T. Okay. So the... okay, excellent. Yeah. You're going to cut this way, T, and we're going to hit that road, the yeah. 818, yes. damage, yes. and then head out of London yeah. on the same road we come yeah. in. Yeah, there's some, some nice buildings around here. I think the main thing was just to sort of have a route that, that had a footpath for tea from London to Ipswich. Amazingly, we, we actually found that and it was outside of uh, the A12. Well, a lot of it was outside of the A12, which really helped because then we were able to sort of pull over and help T out, give him some water if need be. Of course, you can't stop on the dual carriageway, do you know what I mean? So it made things a lot easier for us. It made a lot of uh, things uh, easier for, for T and we could keep track of it a lot easier. So we come off the bridge yeah. and straight away turn right. Yeah. So we're coming towards us. Okay. Yeah. Are you a bit across over there too with the yeah, yeah, we're across there. Okay, okay. Uh, across here. I'll come here. So we'll just come right up here. Yes. Let's just check that we can get through. This is the well we will be able to by foot. Yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, right. More than one was it? Five one. Five one, yeah. Yeah. I think it's lost by one. No, it's lost by one. It's Cannon Lane, is it? It's 
Cannon Street Road. See that guy there, is he a midget or is he just really this short? This guy here. Yeah. yeah. He's really short. This is, this is Cannon Street Road now, yeah. Cannon Street Road. Uh, all the way to. That's a whole different world. Oh, right. Right. Mm -hmm. I've only done it going the way we've no, just come. No, it's fine. It's, uh, we've seen both those roads since, but they, they doesn't correspond with what's on our print now. If he's going to do it, if he's going to run all that way, we need to make sure that the press know, we need to make sure that the, cha the right charity gets involved, we need to make sure that it's getting the right direction, it gets, you know, as much promotion as possible, and that's where, you know, we, you know, we're all amateurs at this stuff, but we all sort of took on a job each of, of this is what we'll do, and that's what you'll do, and this is what you'll do, and, and uh, you know, we ended up making it a very achievable team effort. I think everybody looks at the group or the team as being the team that they were out there with T along, you know, throughout the day. Well, that's, that's not the case. There was, there was um, the girls. Uh, how sexist are we? The girls were back home and uh, sorting out phone calls and updating Facebook and things like this to keep everybody in the know as to how our progress was going and stuff. And they were also getting ready to support T when he got a bit closer to home. During the day, when he was running, we were here, based here. Um, Kate was updating Facebook, and we were so we were contacting all the team throughout the day, getting messages of how it was going. Um, and then we went up to meet them at Mark's Tay and cheered him on, and that was really good to see them. That was a really emotional bit, actually, watching them run off as well. I mean, for me, my main contact has been Kate through the whole thing because Kate has um, kind of, in a way, been the organizer. She's she's being the person in the know, you had any questions, you wanted to know when a meeting was or when an event was, then you go to Kate basically. I've just sort of sat in the middle really because I don't think that I can't run a long way and I don't know that I would be very good at helping somebody else to run a long way. So for me at the beginning I just thought well I need to find something that I can do and what I can do is I can help everybody else do the things that they need to do. So that's kind of what I decided to do, just be a little helper and Help, help Nick help T and help Cy help T and help Andy help T and just help T really because I think um, it was a lot a lot bigger than I think he thought it was going to be actually and I think uh, he needed a bit of support with it all so that's kind of what I tried to do anyway. I'm not sure we underestimated it, we knew it was going to, once we actually really got into the preparation I think we realised how tough it was going to be. The whole thing from start to finish has been a huge learning curve. Um, because I certainly didn't realise how much work goes into organising an event like this um, and how hard it is to raise money. I've done the Race for Life in the past, but it's so easy. It, all the work, all the preparation is done for you. You just turn up on the day, do your run, and that's it. We had to do everything from start to finish and everybody had their own little task leading up to the actual day and we all had, we all carried out those tasks to the best of our ability. 